Welcome back to the podcast that's not going to hit you with a musical interlude every time we change topics. This is the Coaster 101 podcast. I'm Andrew Stilwell, and we have got a full cast of characters this week. Uh, you bring out the big topics, and people suddenly want to talk about it. But joining me first, all the way down in Florida, is Shane Joseph. Shane, welcome back. Thank you very much. Good to be here. And in Ohio, we've got Nick Weisenberger. Nick, how are you? Pretty good. And last but certainly not least, John Stevenson. John, what? how are you? I'm great. There's no coming back from that. So <laughs> there's really not. So the good news is we can we can keep this train rolling very quickly. Let's go. Let's and go. If you didn't want it to happen, you shouldn't have said it. That's all I'm saying. That's fair. That's fair. Well, guys, we are we are several days now uh, post uh, most of us watching a stream of the the D23 Parks panel, and there was a lot announced, obviously, and so I wanted to get everybody together to kind of run through these announcements and kind of give our collective thoughts, and for those who are listening to this podcast because you're Coaster fans and you can't stand when podcasts talk about Disney, first of all, this episode might not be for you, and we're sorry, but in case you're curious, uh, every two years, I believe Disney has this fan expo out in California, they call it D23. There are panels on uh, the parks. There's panels on entertainment, TV shows, historical panels. They honor Disney legends. They do a lot of stuff that's like a Disney super fan convention, basically. And a major part of that uh, for the last several years has been the what is now known as the Disney Experiences panel, which encompasses Disney parks. It encompasses the cruise line. It encompasses in- shopping, any other experiences i guess they're they have uh fortnite in there now we're not going to be talking about that because most of us except for shane are too old for fortnite as it is <laughs> i do play fortnite it, it was a recent recent thing but yeah it's it totally tracks but part of this they had the, they took over the the arena in anaheim i don't even remember what the name of the arena is but I think it's where the, the Mighty Ducks, or the Ducks, as they are now called, play. But they filled it to the brim with Disney fans. It was very hard to get tickets to this, allegedly. And they had a multi-hour presentation about everything that was coming to the Disney parks in the next few years, we'll say. Because two years ago when they did this, uh, they got a little raked over the coals online for the the blue sky ideas, and so when our uh, Josh tomorrow, our good buddy Josh, opened up the uh, proceedings, he said all of these things are real and dirt is moving. And it come to find out, dirt is kind of moving some places, mostly going to move in like twenty twenty five, twenty twenty six. But dirt is moving; these are real things. So we're just going to run down, take a look at all the Disney parks worldwide. Uh, if you have not seen our quick rundown on Coaster101.com, go give that a look. But we're just kind of run down the attractions kind of in this, the announcements that came through specific, specifically as they relate to the parks. Um, and with that, you know, no cruise lines. Unfortunately, they are getting four new cruise ships, which is pretty crazy. But we'll start with Disneyland. And I want to talk to you guys Um there is there is new ride film. First thing that is uh, coming is the the Mandalorian and Grogu are coming to Smuggler's Run, and I think if by this point we've all experienced Smuggler's Run in one way or another, right? Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Watching watching shows of hands here, shows of hands and nods, <laughs> really good for an audio medium. <sighs> I'm also not the world's biggest Star Wars fan, so I will probably defer to Shane. I know is a big. Star Wars fan has a lot of history with property to kick us off, but will the addition of the Mandalorian and baby Yoda, Grogu, whatever we're going to call it, him, it, whatever, (laughs) will it make this ride more enjoyable? Because I remember the one time I wrote it, I was stuck in engineer or whatever that back left seat was. And I'm just like pushing Uh buttons and nothing makes sense. And I I can't, it was like, I can't believe I waited this long for this ride, but (laughs) What will the addition of uh, Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian do for this attraction? 
Uh, well, I first of all, yeah, I'm very excited uh, about this because the more scenes on Smuggler's Run was something that was always sort of floated out. I think from even from when it opened, where they knew that eventually they were going to want to put new ride film on this, and uh, I think that it is going to be a great addition because that show specifically and those two characters have a massive fan base and a massive following um and i i don't know if it's is it only disneyland or i thought it was going into both it might be it's on our article as disneyland so um john as the author of the article do you remember where if it was going to both i'm looking i started it i didn't finish it i had been a great um six flags all day and was literally falling asleep as josh was chatting um <laughs> also fair i think yeah, i don't I, I think they might not have said yeah i would assume it would be both you would think it's i'd think yeah so it's probably coming to both again somebody Which, is still gonna get stuck in the engineering seat but instead yeah, of, i mean that is yeah I, to, I mean you can always ask i do every time i've i've never i've done the other seats to try them but i will always ask um, to be the pilot. So that next time you go, you got to ask, but um, I think what's so, as you said, as a big Star Wars fan, what me and a lot of other people have been kind of talking about is this is going to break the timeline of galaxy's edge uh, in a major way, because this movie, the Mandalorian and Grogu movie, uh, which is all, which is coming out in 2026. So I'm assuming that's also when this, new ride film is is going on um i hope it's earlier but uh probably will be to to come out with the movie um you know this takes place in the right after the original trilogy and galaxy's edge up until now has been pretty firmly rooted in the new trilogy so i'm very curious what that's going to look like i don't know do you guys think they're going to change the pre-show or anything like that how do you think they're going to handle it that's a great question. I'm I'm sure they'll find a way to to shoehorn it. I think is a good word. I think if if we can um, if we can base an entire roller coaster on a fictional character's trips to Epcot as a child, riding the Universe <laughs> of Energy, um, I think we can do anything. And Disney is they're great at crafting that story. So I don't know if it's going to be because I mean. Even with like Star Tours, for example, like you, you have the old, you have the new, you keep adding characters, adding scenic locations, and all it is is a warp screen that gets you there. So I'm sure they'll they'll find a way to do it. Yeah, and just quick update: it is coming to Hollywood Studios as well in 2026 when the Mandalorian movie uh, hits okay. theaters. So we got a okay. little ways to go. There we go. Nick, are you a Star Wars fan at all? I mean, do you? Yeah, have, you've got at least young least, young kids who would enjoy this yeah, attraction. At least for the uh, the movies and the TV shows. So I haven't read all the the books and the comics and all the other things. So I think that will will help this ride if it's you know two characters that are actually recognizable by the majority of people who ride it instead of you know a character that you have to uh, be real deep into Star Wars to know. So. I think that'll sure. definitely help, but I always thought the ride, you know, was just okay to begin with. So I think it'll just be marginally better. Also fair. John, any, any thoughts before we, uh, we keep this train moving? Not really. I'm a casual star Wars fan. So I'll go on it. Um, just to hold me over until I get on rise of resistance again. There we go. <laughs> exactly. And, at the end of the day, baby Yoda prints merch, prints money with merch. Yeah. Rather. Yeah. So yeah. any, any way to, again, shoehorn baby Yoda into the parks, I'm sure Disney will jump at the chance to do that. Um, but up next also coming to Disneyland park. This one, I think caught a lot of people by surprise is the attraction name here is Walt Disney, a magical life, which is, I think splitting shows with great moments of mr lincoln so i don't know if they're gonna put it on like a carousel of progress turntable stage but this is supposedly gonna be the um world's like the disney's most advanced human animatronic is what i read about this and it's gonna be a walt disney story he'll get up he'll talk to you from his desk i'm personally a little creeped out by this one i feel like 
you know, Disneyland was Walt Disney's vision. And at the end of the day, it's a, it's a robot of the guy who created the place. It's just giving me weird kind of creepy vibes. Yeah. The uncanny Valley is what I'm most concerned about, but they've, they've made some incredible advancements in this, in this realm. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering how they're going to swap it out too. Like they didn't say how often, like, is it every, you know, half an hour, one beginning of the, the hour, it's one, it's Lincoln. Then the next half an hour, it's Walt. Or is this like a, for one month long, it's Walt. And then the next month it's Lincoln. They never really yeah. said. What if it's both Walt's and they just put like a, <laughs> they just put a beard on hat him. on him. <laughs> yeah. yeah beard. Make him like two feet taller. It's like, you're not fooling anyone, buddy. He's going to get the Gettysburg address. <laughs> Gettysburg address in Walt Disney's voice. Ooh. I'm in. I'm now. I want to go even more. That would be great. Yeah, I want to see that. Um, what do we think about how they're going to do Walt's voice? Or is it going to be a voice actor? We think it's going to be AI. Do we think it's going to be hmm. bits and pieces I, of old clips all strung together? I think it's uh, the safest way to go. I think would just be old clips. Uh, there's definitely no shortage of clips of. Walt Disney talking about the park itself. Um, So I don't know whether they're going to go into the angle of like his life story or specifically about Disneyland. Um, But I think there's definitely enough footage out there where they can put together a, I don't know how long the the Lincoln show is, but I would assume this Walt show would be about 10 or 15 minutes. So I would think that there's enough clips to fill that time. I would love it, and I know this is probably technologically impossible, if they would take the Walt animatronic, but they would hit it with the the Turtle Talk with Crush or the uh, Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor. Oh, like, wow. Interactive Interactivity and have Walt just like roast people and be like, <laughs> I don't care about your opinion. I'm Walt Disney. I mean, they had the, the uh, Mickey Mouse meet and greet and the Rocket Raccoon meet and greet at D23. That was the same type of thing. Oh, that's true. With, yeah. I'm assuming those were AI voices on those. Um, so it's possible. Yeah, I saw it. They interviewed, or I saw it was somebody on TikTok. I don't even know the, the lady's name, but like Mickey greeted her by name. And it was like, she was like, I love your outfit. And he goes, oh, oh, I, I, I have to dress a certain way, wear tennis shoes because I'm on the floor all day. And it's like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, uh, creepy, creepy robot. Um, Disney fans, I think, will love this because there is a certain subset of Disney fan who is like, Walt did this. This is Walt's legacy, and Walt is continuing to breathe his legacy into this park. And then I feel like there will be a lot other, a different audience who is like, this is kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, any, any, uh, any thoughts on the Walt Disney robot? Uh, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see like the pose. Cause one of the coolest things with the Abraham Lincoln one is he's, he's initially sitting down in a chair and then he stands up, which I imagine yeah. when they first rolled that out back in the, the 1960s, that must've blown people's minds. Like that'd be cool to go back and see people react to that. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if Walt will do something similar, if he's just going to be like leaning on the desk. Well, the good news is. Um, given our society that we live in today, there will be 47 million YouTube videos the first day, <laughs> all all shot on like TI-84 calculators and nobody will have the right audio and it's, and then Disney will take them down and DMCA everything. So, or DCMA, whatever it is. Anyway, moving on, we're going to go across the uh, plaza at Disneyland Resort and um, this one I don't really understand. Um, it is it is an Avengers E ticket, and John, you kind of started writing this. I don't know if this is where you got to, um, but the Avengers of Infinity Defense. What are we looking at here? Excellent, cool. <laughs> John so Mitchell. I'm oh. so I'm looking. Um, yeah, it's very mysterious. I don't. I honestly am not quite sure what the. I know it's the main Avengers attraction, but 
it's a, it's a it, multi-world adventurous experience or adventure experience um so yeah you, so it sounds like the, it's the new um peter pan ride at the fantasy springs in tokyo disney sea it looks like it's using the same ride vehicle as that which looks like essentially the spider-man ride from islands of adventure that opened in mm. 1999 Okay. Yeah. Okay. The concept art doesn't really show much of the ride vehicles, just kind of the front row. And um, so, yeah, it, I, I definitely get kind of this Spider Man vibes from it. It's got the high walls on the side so that you are, can only see the, the screen that you're being pointed at. Okay. I, I think this was one of those that was, it's, it's several D 23s in the making at this point. I feel like when they opened adventures mm-hmm. campus, it was one of those things that was like, yeah, and we're going to have this ride. And then COVID happened and they didn't have the ride and they had uh, the Spider-Man web shooter game. And then the, the restaurant with the big chicken sandwiches. And it seemed like there were a bunch of like patents out there for other new like ride systems too. And then they just went with this one, like the safe one. The interesting thing too is that this they announced two rides for Avengers Campus. There's this one, and then there's a, a weird, like, detached Kuka arm type of thing. But if you look at the original Avengers e ticket from all those D23s ago, it looks like they're using the Kuka arm technology in the e ticket ride because the original pitch for that was essentially like flight of passage, but the seats could break off individually. So, what it looks like happened is they essentially just split that into two where they kept the e-ticket ride, but used the Peter Pan ride vehicles and then kind of reconfigured the KUKA version to be a flat ride. That's also going into land. Do you guys remember, like, I think it was called the sum of all thrills at Epcot that had like the early, like pre Harry Potter KUKA arm or around the same time as that. That's that to me is what this um, Stark flight lab and I don't know how we're going to do that now that Tony Stark is also the Dr. Doom. The Green Goblin. Dr. Dr. Doom. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Robert Downey Jr. Printing money, making rides, doing all these other things. Um, yeah. This, this flight lab thing with the robot arm. I can't tell if it's on a track. I can't well, tell. Like, I think the, like the robotic two. arms are stationary, which I think yeah. Legoland California, I think had a robotic arm ride where, yeah, there was like just four stationary robotic arms, but I think the thing that this ride solves is this: you load into the seats in a separate area from where the the arms are, so it can increase the the throughput. Okay, hmm. which that is super interesting to me. I'm, I think that's so cool. I'm very excited it, to see. What it this just adds like. to the ride a little bit. So if you're you load somewhere yeah. else, and then you go around on the track, and then the arm picks you up. All right, I I see it working. Maybe, hopefully. I, I feel like that's a lot of moving pieces, forgive the expression, because that's what this ride looks like. But let's say it's a lot of moving pieces. So uh, there is a there picture a- of uh, of uh, Bob Iger and Robert Downey, like trying it out. Their faces oh. don't look too happy. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get off Mr. Stark's <laughs> wild ride. Um, also in Disney's California Adventure, I don't know where they're putting all this. Uh, but they are getting their own version of Avatar Land, which I think has been long rumored as part of the the Disneyland Forward Initiative. Um, this one it's, it appears to have a highly immersive land, uh, and will have one. Let me let me write a thrilling immersive boat ride. So Shane, I I know yes. you are the world's biggest Navi River Journey fan. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I like the ride a lot. I said I what too. I said. I'm not. Oh, you guys! Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna cancel. We this keep podcast. saying we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we need to actually do that. We need to record that yeah. episode. Fine. Okay. Anyway, you guys, with your slow, slow moving, boring boat ride that's on par with the river raft adventure at Rainforest Cafe in Galveston, no, Texas. No, so wrong, so wrong. <laughs> it's it's a highly themed Rainforest Cafe boat ride. That's what it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, I am it's all not, about a themed, themed boat ride theme boat ride the one in pigeon forge like the jurassic boat any kind of slow moving boat ride with physical sets i'm in they don't even have to be good i'm in theme boat rides built disney i mean they did some respect the smell the smell of the chlorinated water it's it's intoxicating yeah we need to have an episode on that 
Yeah, Andrew, didn't you write the article I, about slow moving boat rides? I did, and I think I ranked Navi Reaver Journey like thirteen out of fifteen. Okay, well, you're <laughs> yeah. entitled to a wrong opinion. It's the yeah, way it goes. You know, I host this <laughs> podcast, so I can say what I want to. Um, but this ride, I think Nick, we were talking to me and to you and to anybody looking at the concept art. This almost resembles the the Shanghai Pirates ride that has this just massive appeal to it. And I think of the two boat rides, if this is indeed what we're getting as an avatar version of Shanghai pirates, uh, the West coast, 100% bar none has the better avatar boat ride. And this is coming from somebody (laughs) still hasn't seen an avatar film. Not what, what is wrong with you? Oh, see the guys who have seen the avatar movie, like the avatar boat ride, go figure. I don't, (laughs) I don't get it. It's, I mean, there is international acclaim and it's made billions of dollars and I just... It made the the most money ever of anything. (laughs) It made the most money ever of anything. Of any movie, at least. Uh, (laughs) Of Shane Joseph, 2024. What a quote. Yeah, you can quote me on that. (laughs) Okay. So... Anyways, this ride looks great. Anyways, Nick, you wrote the article several, like a while ago about the Shanghai Pirates and how that ride worked, right? Yep. What yeah. Do you, so, what do guests have to look forward to um, with this one? Yeah, just based on the concept art, the boats. It's, it's basically just from what they said uh, describing the ride and the, the concept art that shows the bigger boat. It seemed to match the same size as the Shanghai Pirates run. But uh, the thing with that ride, it's not just a boat going through a trough or a track. Like they can turn the boat to face whatever direction they want. And, you know, it can go up and down hills as well. So it could be a little more thrilling than your the Pandora boat ride. As, as Shane says, it's, it's a boat ride that's made more boats than any <laughs> boat ride in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Shane, you should run for president. Sorry. Oh, um, good. <laughs> but, yeah, this is this will be good. Um, I hope they can theme it. And if uh, what we're getting ready to talk about in a little bit is going to happen, something will probably be taken out of California Adventure in order yeah. to make this land happen. That's the question and is of, when and where. When and where and how mad are people going to be online about it? <laughs> That's it's really what it comes down to. And then another attraction, one more coming to California Adventure. Um, this is a uh, Coco-inspired boat ride coming to Disney California Adventure. Uh, it will break ground in 2026. So given the relative speed at which the Walt Disney Company builds attractions, um, Shane will be 45 years old when this ride opens. <laughs> Shane is 22. I, I, I'm not 22. I am excited <laughs> for this attraction, no matter when it gets built. Uh, I think this is great. Uh, it, this also kind of came out of nowhere. Like a lot of this other stuff was at least sort of rumored or had been announced before and we just got more details. Um, but this is a lot of stuff that's going to California Adventure. Um, four new rides. Really trying to build out that park. Four, four new rides is, is wild, but... It is um, definitely nothing to shake a stick at. And I'm, I'm happy that the parks are getting this investment. So let me yes, just make that I am abundantly curious, clear. I'm curious what is going into Disneyland forward then because I... In that original concept art, Avatar was in that expansion area. So I'm guessing it, the only thing is that that is going to happen like well down the line is my guess. So they just want to fast track Avatar to, to be open sooner. But yeah, I'm not sure. Is yeah. there any way I, I've – my Disneyland Ford knowledge is relatively limited. Is there any way that they can connect that space to California Adventure? I mean, is there any way that that's where this is going? Pardon my Any, ignorance. I mean, anything is possible. It's just how far of an underground tube do you want to walk through? I, I well, that's kind yeah. of what I feel like. It's there's Disneyland Forward, from what I remember, has the, it was kind of like these parking like lots taking over the parking lots of like downtown Disney parking lot and the the other parking lots by the hotels, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I mean, y'all have been to Kentucky Kingdom. You know how you get to the other side of the park. That's true, and, and you know what, Disney. They would do the exact same thing, just an open pathway over the highway. <laughs> yep. That's the only only way to do it. So you know what? We're we're that's how we're gonna do it. 
Gets you but, from point A to point B. I mean, it would be, I mean, I'm looking at the satellite view and I don't, I know this isn't a speculation episode, but I mean, Grizzly Peak is, I, that, you know, they've invested so much money into that park and so much of it is new, relatively new. I just, I don't know where else they're going to put something of that size, either boat ride. I mean, those aren't, especially Avatar. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. Sorry, Cars Land. We, we, <laughs> Don't be sorry no. to Cars Land. We're gonna. We're I gonna feel like Monsters cars. Inc. would be the most, most likely ride to be ripped out of there. Yeah, that's what people are saying. This is a this a is a really bugs. good good segue. Speaking of Monsters <laughs> Inc., soon we're gonna cross the coast and head to Walt Disney World Resort. Uh, you know, beneficiaries of uh, several announcements to their own. Uh, the first of which is I feel like a long rumored uh, attraction. At, at Animal Kingdom, is uh, they're going to transform Dino Land USA into the 11 acre tropical America's land and will feature two amazing, sorry, two major attractions. The first of which is Indiana Jones, which, if you know of Disney lore and you know how they build attractions, Dinosaur, formerly Countdown to Extinction, is the exact same basic ride as Indiana Jones at Disneyland. So if this is going to be a new story, is it going to be the same, same ride path? Is it going to, are they going to knock down dinosaur completely or gut the building and then build this Indiana Jones ride from scratch? What, what do we think is going to happen here? Um, Knowing what we know about how these attractions are kind of linked together. Well, my biggest question is, is Felicia Rashad going to be in the pre-show? I That's the thing that's been keeping me up at night. John, we got to get you sleeping more. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I, and are they going to go, do we think we're going to get Shia LaBeouf, Indiana Jones, or are we going to get mm. Indiana, uh, Harrison no. Ford, Indiana Jones? You don't know, Shane. I mean, Shane, I, Shia LaBeouf yes. is your generation's Indiana Jones. How, no, how Ooh. dare you? No, no, he's not. <laughs> uh, but I am. This is the thing that I'm the most excited about uh, from the announcements. I've never been on Indiana Jones because I've never been to Disneyland. But Indiana Jones is probably my favorite franchise, so I'm super excited about this. Um, I think that they are the exact same layout yeah. already, yeah. if not very similar. Yeah, very close. Um, so I'm guessing they're just going to gut all the dinosaur theming and essentially build a new facades around the track that's already there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can see in the concept art, like the building and even the outdoor areas are going to stay the same land wise yeah. and shape wise. Um, so I think it's going to be uh, really interesting to see this when it's done uh, comparing it to like a, a very, um, you know, modern uh, industrial like museum structure to this ancient Mayan temple. Uh, but I love that they're doing an original story because they totally could have just built the exact same thing that's in California. But I'm so happy that something new is going in there and they're tying it into animals because uh, it's going to be the quest for some uh, mythical animal. So um, I like that they they kind of added a little animal kingdom touch you're you're stretching shane I, I love, <laughs> hey it's something at I, least i love you i really do but man that's that's a reach and i speaking, think it's okay look banshee if we have banshees this is not that much of a stretch it's this is true this is true but <laughs> speaking of, of stretching to fit into the animal theme um and this is coming from somebody who has not seen the film in kanto um Again, I got to get up on my Disney movies. I'm I'm sorry, I'm slacking. I watch a lot of like the Imagineering stuff on Disney Plus, not so much the the feature films. But there is going to be an Encanto in track attraction. Um, it's not going to be a boat ride. That's what we know. And there's going to be animal tie-ins. There appears to be a tiger, jaguar, or jaguar, leopard, some sort of animal. Capybaras in here, parrots snakes i don't know if this is like animal kingdom tiki room i don't know what we're getting here but have you guys 
Does anybody, Nick, you've got kids. Have you seen Encanto? Oh yeah, definitely. Does it fit the theme of Animal Kingdom? Um, Sort of, I guess. I mean, each member of the family has a magical gift, and I guess they're going to base it around the one kid whose gift is being able to talk to animals. So okay, I guess so. But I mean, I think Animal Kingdom needed more family-friendly attractions, so I think that's going to fit uh, very well. Because yes, we're I, assuming this is either going to be a trackless dark ride or an Omnimover. Yes. yeah, It does appear to have some sort of ride vehicle in here, so I guess we will not be getting uh, Animal Kingdom Tiki Room like I just said. But, yeah, I think, if again, if, if Peter Quill can visit the Universe of Energy and build a roller coaster, <laughs> this is, uh, this is, I guess we can put it in Animal Kingdom, I guess. I don't know. The show building is also massive. If the the model at D twenty three, the the show building for this ride is huge. So, and this is uh, this is pure expansion. This is not replacing anything, right? Yes, yes. So this well, technically, it's replacing the, um, the Prime Evil World, yeah. but that's uh, that hasn't been R. there R. for oh, a few years. But yeah, uh, but yeah, I think this is a a very positive addition. And this one we actually have an opening date for. Um, I th- at least Indiana Jones 2027. Um, they said the land will open in phases though. So I'm thinking maybe in console will be open later, um, but I'm happy to, to have a, a date on it. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's going to be a carousel in this land too, but really at the, oh, end, of yeah. the, at the end of the day, we just got to pour one out for the homie Dr. Seeker. It's a sad yeah. day for him, but well, we, we shall uh, persevere. Um, very, very important news. Um, I think we knew this already because it closed earlier this year. Epcot, uh, test track is going to reopen in 2025 and they're getting a lounge. That's all we got to say. Cause you know, oh, there's a, yeah. there's a spaceship earth lounge and test track is maybe going to be a little bit different, slightly less Tron like and more automotive, like more world of motion, like, hmm. Yeah, I think the Spaceship Earth Lounge, I'm actually very excited about that. I don't know where it's Who, going, but it looks is, cool. Who's going to have access to it? Did they, did they say that? Or is this, it's not going to be... I think it's like, I think it's a, it's just like a restaurant. Okay. Like, I don't All think right. it's like a DVC lounge. I think it's just a lounge. Okay. Club 33 Spaceship Earth Edition. I Oh, maybe. Know. I'm here for it. John, are, are we rich? Does Coaster 101 rich? Get back with me in about five years. I'll let okay. you know. <laughs> fair, fair enough. We we need a group club thirty three membership when you are getting yes. a chance. All right, we want to. I want to go to my favorite personal, my favorite announcement, and this because this digs back into my like high school, college age theme park fandom. Monsters Inc. Land. We are getting the door coaster at Hollywood Studios. Nobody knows where it's going to be. Because the concept art basically is two entirely different locations. But we are getting Disney's first suspended coaster. It is the door coaster. It has been rumored since like 2007. It is 2024. Shane was not even born yet. Uh, yes, he was. I'm, 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 I'm joking. <laughs> I was I'm, born. I'm joking. He was four. Whatever. <laughs> not um, far off, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. Shane. Again, I love you. I love picking on you. It's great. Uh, I know. Uh, but let's 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 pull the audience here, or not the audience, <laughs> but the the panel, because we can't pull the audience. We could probably, but who's listening? Comment, comment on this. Com- comment, tweet us. Monsters Inc. Land. I think that's the title. Monsters Inc. Land. Yeah. Where is it going? Are we going animation courtyard? Are we getting uh, Streets of America or wherever that? Um, former i think it was streets of america now it's grand avenue where the muppets is are they gonna gut rock and roller coaster completely now that aerosmith is officially retired like so nick where do you think it's going oh uh, i hope it's going an animation courtyard but <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised if it was taking over muppets okay shane what about you what, what are your thoughts here i would be shocked if it did not go into animation courtyard um it looks like just from the satellite pictures that there's a lot of kind of space they could push back there if they get rid of like some office buildings and Star Wars launch bay and Disney Junior. 
Um, and it wouldn't be replacing a ride. So I think anytime we can add a ride without taking one away is a positive. John, where do you think it's going? I don't know this park well enough to say, I don't know. I wrote, I read a theory on, uh, X that it was replacing rock and roller coaster, which I just stopped reading, but I'm looking at it now. And yeah, animation courtyard, I guess makes the most sense. I don't know. This is. What yeah, a, near here's here. a, here's an idea that um, probably nobody's talking about. And I don't even know what the park looks like from the overhead view to put this in there. What if they got rid of the lightning McQueen racing Academy? Is that a big show building? I have no idea. No, it's not big. Um, at all but there i maybe they could push out to the right of that um if they did get rid of it i'm not sure what's there it's it's i mean that area i think is like pretty much right on top of tower of terror so i don't know true uh what's back there but yeah the, actually I, I haven't heard that brought up that's a interesting possibility i, I got one funny to have two giant coaster boxes next to each other yes I got one other theory that's that's I haven't seen anywhere on the internet, so I'm just going to put it out there in the world. They've got a big former hotel kind of in the backside of the park. <laughs> Sorry, Shane, RIP. But uh, uh-huh. could, could we build a coaster in the uh, Galactic Star Cruiser and connect it to the park somehow? I think that would be awesome. I, it's a little far away, but if they find a way to get people there, you have that to, would be interesting enter through a door and Randall's going to transport you. And then there's going to be a pathway and it's going to go over the street. Deal. (laughs) Just do it. Just just like in Kentucky kingdom. Yeah. But yeah, I think we've got, again, that was, I personally am not a fan of announcing a land and then the land has one ride because that's not really a land. It's not a land. Mm -hmm. It's an attraction. Um, But it does look And one thing I saw somebody on social media put out there was the uh, Harry Housens, the sushi restaurant from Monsters Inc., is represented in both pieces of concept art, so we could probably get a a sushi restaurant out of this. Yeah, maybe. they did say there's going to be shopping and dining, so I think again, which to me means that it's going to be taking up a lot of space, which a Muppets does not have. So yes, I think that and, true. How many of those Monsters University hats are they going to sell in this new land? Uh, it's it's going so to be many. absurd. All of them. Every single <laughs> one of them. They're going to have to restock like daily. And moving over to the final uh, Walt Disney World Park. This has gotten a lot of controversy and a lot of traction online uh, this week because Disney has announced kind of a mini area and frontier land with cars. They've also announced a new villain land. But in order to do this, they are filling in the rivers of America and leveling Tom Sawyer's Island. Are we mad about this? I'm not. I it's, Everyone's like, but the history, but, but Tom Sawyer's Island, but places to go. Like Nick, you said you took your son there when he was three years old to take a nap. And <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. that was a while ago. Yeah, that's but, like when the the news first came, like, yeah, I was a little sad just because like that's how you're used to seeing the park. Uh, that's nostalgia, just remembering your childhood and that's how it looked like and then taking your kid over there for a nap. So it was a little sad for me for like a day and then I was over it. And now I'm like, oh, this Cars Land thing could be pretty cool. Okay, so you know, are we, we're not mad, right? It's We're replacing I'm, I'm a... not mad. I, I think it's very exciting. Um. I think that it's going to look really cool in that area. Um, I think that, I mean, the ride from, from the concept ride they put out looks awesome. Uh, lots of different environments. Uh, there's like rock parts and desert parts. Uh, there's a, a part with the waterfall that I think is going to add a water feature um, back to that area, which, which will be good. Um, I'm picturing so the, yeah, I'm the, very excited. the Grizzly Peak area from California Adventure. More like the area around the rapids ride because a lot of the rest of that park is like there's no shade and you know, like just streets and stuff but then you go over and it's like a national park themed big trees lots of shade rock work running water so i'm picturing if they if they can get that kind of vibe into that area then i think it will because a lot of th- people i think are more just 
they're worried that the view is going to be bad. Like they're more concerned about just the river being gone and having that like ambience gone. So I think if they bring that like nature aspect into it, I think that will satisfy those people in the end. I think that's my biggest issue with it is that is such a nice, I am a big bo- uh, fan of water and I think it's just nice kind of that tranquil area. It breaks the park up a little bit. So I, I'm not upset necessarily. I mean, I think obviously this is going to be an incredible area, but it, it, it would be nice if there was a way to have some sort of compromise and keep some of that water, you know, obviously they can't keep the river. Um, I just hope they do incorporate water and it looks like they will in areas, I guess it's a little hard to judge the concept art, but I hope that they're able to incorporate some um, just, I don't know. I think it's a nice area of the park and um, I hate to see it as someone who's very nostalgic and sentimental. I'll be sad to see Tom Sawyer and rivers of America go. And especially considering how much space the park has that I'm like, I wish we could kind of keep some of it, but you know, that's just the price you pay for growth and change. And I mean, it's like I said, yeah, it's going to be an incredible area. So. Yeah. I want to go back to something Nick said, and he was talking about satisfying Disney fans I don't think that's physically possible. <laughs> I just, I just want to go out on a limb because anytime I, I forget who it was, somebody posed the question on Twitter. Cause I'm not going to call it its new name. Um, if there was, it's like, are there any attractions at Walt Disney world that would not cause like massive outcry if they were removed tomorrow? And I think there's one. What is that? I think that is Tomorrowland Speedway. I I disagree because people <laughs> someone like, will you're going to offend big <laughs> big oil at that point and big gasoline. I guess wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. You don't yeah. love the smell of exhaust? I do. <laughs> yeah. It really revs my engines. No, oh, there you go. No. Okay. <laughs> Boo. Anyway, um I do want to bring up our buddies um Chris and DJ over at Corkscrew Convos, and we had Chris on the podcast a couple weeks ago at this point. They brought up the idea. I was listening to their, they, like us, did a D23 recap because, you know, it's topical, and they're far more professional at it than I am. They brought up an interesting idea of, like, for the ride concept, and I know Dynamic Attractions has been sold, but back in 2017 at IAPA, which was actually my first time on that show floor, they unveiled this all-terrain trackless dark ride. And if you look at these videos, it kind of has a similar, or not videos, but concept art. It has kind of a similar flair to it. We'll link this article in the show notes. It's an interview with um, our buddy John K. George, who did PR for Dynamic for a while. Just something to think about if we could see this uh, this all-terrain vehicle, you know, kind of see the light of day. And if we could kind of maybe do because there's there's water here there is water um mud dirt rocks it could be an interesting ride vehicle just an idea but i don't know i I think that would be very interesting um i think that uh i'm not sure that would fit the ip as well um just because i feel like this and radiator springs racers both kind of focus a lot on the speed true um but i would love if that concept was brought back there's there's always time and we're going to find out sometime in the next five to ten years or whenever this is happening um but the other thing coming to magic kingdom and i want you guys to look close at this concept art because i didn't see this originally but again somebody put it out uh, out there on twitter or x or some form of social media if you look in the bottom center of this concept art for villains land there's going to be two attractions in Villains Land. Uh, that's all they said. Um, two major attractions, dining and shopping. They didn't announce what the rides were going to be or how they were going to act. But looking in the center of this photo in the bottom, does that not look like Coaster Track to you guys? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's a... I'm not sure which one you're looking at, but there is a picture of the concept art with a roller coaster track. Yeah, that's it. And train going over it. Yeah, Disney has the chance to do the funniest thing ever and build their own dueling dragons. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've got 
I'm looking at this this concept art. You've got um, what looks to be the fan uh, phantasmic Maleficent over here in the corner, um, and I know this isn't reactive because I'm sure this is you know years and years in the making. It is hilarious that for so many years in Orlando we had no dedicated villain attractions, and now we're getting Dark Universe and the Villains Land in a mm. several year time span, which is pretty they even wild. look similar too in the concept art. Yeah, I I don't know this this is exciting. I'm very happy that they're bulldozing Tom Sawyer Island and, and Rivers of America for this. But that's, well, this I'm, I think is going back behind Big Thunder Mountain, right? Right. But isn't 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 the river getting? I think it's. I saw some oh, sort I of think like. So. Over, I mean, overlay, the thing that's interesting too about this concept art is there is a lot of water in this. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if they're going to repurpose the river or like redirect it somewhere. But I think that would be really interesting to have like central water features moving around this land. Disney is built on a swamp, so the water I feel like comes <laughs> that's natu- true. naturally from the water table. Um, but yeah, I think these are all very exciting things coming to the, uh, domestic Disney parks. Uh, there's also a new nighttime parade, but, um, if anybody listening to our podcast is really, really excited about that parade, we are very happy for you. That's all I gotta say. It's a parade. Like Disney does really, really good parades and this will be another really, really good parade. And here's a musical interlude of of 30 seconds of royalty free music. Just kidding. Um. So don't forget the Zootopia show at Animal oh, Kingdom. We skipped right over yeah. that one. We we did because somebody didn't include it in the article. John and Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. I just forgot to. I am very. I was hoping for a Zootopia land at Animal Kingdom, but I understand a bustling city might not fit well within the wilderness of but Animal Kingdom. Maybe Peter- in another park though. Peter Quill, as a kid, watched Zootopia. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, is, the, is the Zootopia show going into the It's Tough to Be a Bug Theater? Is that what's happening? Yes. Is that... yep. yes. Tree of Life, yeah. Okay. Is that imminent? Was that soon? I don't even remember. That's like, next I remember winter. Seconds. So, ne- winter 25. But December 25, not like January 25, right? Right. Well, I, in I'm Florida, assuming. winter is only what December. Well, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Also true. You get it's like three days in January. It's to like sixty degrees, and they put on their winter coats. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I I went to Disney one time, uh, January, and it was like forty degrees in the Magic Kingdom, and I and my brother and I were the only ones riding Splash Mountain, and <laughs> <laughs> the the cast members were like, what are y'all doing? But we got some really good pictures out of it. So um, on the subject of Splash Mountain, this is, a, how's that for a segue? Mm-hmm. Disney Disney Adventure World, which is what Disney Studios Paris uh, is now calling itself or getting ready to call itself. They're getting what appears to be a Splash Mountain-esque ride or Tiana's Bayou Adventure-esque ride themed to the lion king and i have i've again reading social media people were concerned that this was like the modern realistic animated like animated reality beyonce lion king but in reality it's the 1994 animated lion king so that'll be fun but and looking at this concept art i can't help but think this would have been really cool in the the domestic Disney parks at both Disneyland and um, Magic Kingdom. I does it fit the Frontierland theme? No, absolutely not. But if you're gonna throw an IP in there, Pride Rock looks more like a log flume than a sugar factory, sugar cane salt Sh- mine. <laughs> salt mine. Thank you, Shane. I, I know you've you've been on it. I haven't. I haven't seen it. I. So I'm. This one looks exciting. It's not going to get me to you know book a plane ticket to Paris anytime soon. But what do you guys think at this point? Uh, Lion King is 30, 30. 30 years old. It uh, is wild that it has taken this long to get a true Lion King attraction, a ride, e ticket. 
I mean, yeah. it, it is criminal, honestly. And um, obviously, I mean, I don't know if I would make a special trip for it either, but if it's successful, I do hope we see it domestically at some point in the future, which I think it will be. I mean, it's such a beloved franchise and I'm glad, yeah, that live action, not really, not a huge fan. I think just I'm a purist and that was one of the first movies I saw as a kid. So it always will hold a special place in my heart. And I've seen so many concepts for Lion King attractions that people have proposed over the years. Pride Rock. I mean, it's just all of it is so iconic and lends itself so well to something like this. So I'm glad that um, despite how much I do not like the name of this park, uh, the new name, I will, I can't wait to see this come to life. I think it's going to be incredible. I think something else too that uh, I haven't heard a lot of people talking about is that this is replacing Galaxy's Edge. So they are no longer going to be building a Galaxy's Edge and this is going in the space that that was going to be in. Oh. Oh, I did not realize that. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Yeah, they buried the lead on that one. Yeah, they really did. (laughs) Um, Which I think is very surprising. Um, But on that model and in the the concept art from a few D23s ago, this is is right in that spot. Yeah, they'll just reuse the rocks. Yeah. (laughs) I'm sure they already had them on site. The the French are a lot more strict about their uh, Star Wars canon and being fam- fam- I guess so thematically integrity and all that. So. Yeah, I do wonder overseas if um, <laughs> I do wonder overseas if if Star Wars has that same impact. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I've never been so um, or Lion King. I wouldn't think that Lion King would have the global appeal either, but I don't know. We'll see. It, it, but it's like you said, it is crazy to me that, again, thirty. it's taken 30 years to get an actual ride that's not just a train ride that they slap Rafiki's name on. Yeah. Like Rafiki's Planet Watch or the the film that was in Epcot. I mean, there has been this this IP has been ripe for the picking for 30 some years. So glad it's happening um, over in Shanghai Disneyland. We're getting another coaster. Um Spider-Man is on the loose. This, to me, looks a lot like Guardians of the Galaxy. I was going to say, you want to you want to talk about burying the lead? I think this is far and away the most exciting thing announced at D23, and no one is talking about it. Same. 100%. Um, you want to know why? You want to know why? Because we're spoiled Americans who <laughs> rare, rarely go overseas, and I know there's a good number of people who go overseas, but... If it doesn't come into the U.S. Disney parks, odds are most Disney fans don't care about it, which is terrible. That's a shame because the, an outdoor Guardians through like a city, I mean, that is incredible. With the Spider-Man theme, I mean, that that concept art from the inside that, that looks to be the, the launch track. Um, yeah, I'm unbelievably excited about this. What are we thinking? I mean, is this a Vacoma? It. We think. Like I said, I it looks. It looks exactly. It looks like, like Guardians. It, yeah, it looks exactly like the Guardians, and I mean, concept art can be can show one thing and mean a completely different thing, as evidenced by the Monsters Inc. concept art that is very literally in two different places inside of Hollywood Studios. <laughs> I don't know, guys. It looks kind of like Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket to me. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of does, actually. actually. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. Maybe they're just relocating it. For, they bought it from Universal and plop it down. It's ready to go. It's part of the it's part of the uh, Simpsons deal with the uh, with Disney buying the Simpsons. They also got the rights to Hollywood Rip Ride and Rocket, which is why it's down to five. We're starting rumors that have are just factless <laughs> at this point. I'm never going to be allowed back on this show. I just yes, believe in speaking things into existence, and I think a Guardians Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket overlay, choose your own song. I mean, come on. That'd be anyway, really cool. that'd be really cool. I, would be know, great. I will say the random selection on Guardians is pretty fun, but choosing your own song would be really good, and then people would just hammer, um, what Conga or uh, September. Well, I'm so glad the Disney Parks blog uploads this concept art at full size, I mean, massive size. And so you can 
um, zoom in on the, you have to edit the URL a bit, but um, the, you, I mean, you can zoom in on this. I mean, that's a hundred percent a tower of terror. I mean, even the, the roof, the, the ceiling, whatever is that see-through mesh material. I mean, it's just going to be interesting because they don't have a tower of terror, correct? I'm not forgetting yeah, something. Great. You're talking, we're talking yeah. about the Hong Kong Disneyland, the other Spider-Man attraction, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I jumped to that's, Hong Kong. That's, that's okay. Yes, which I also, which I think is Another the under. second most exciting yeah. thing that also yeah. nobody is talking about. This looks unbelievable. A modern new gen Tower of Terror with Spider-Man theme fighting Doc Ock. Come on, that's great. How do you not like that? I like it. I'm I'm good with it. I'm. That's great. I'm sad that we'll probably never get it in the U.S. at all. Because not with that attitude. Probably not. John, John, speak it into existence. Go. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think that's that to me is again this Tower of Terror ride vehicle. I see the Avengers logo in the background over here. So I'm wondering if what's going to happen with that. But good news is we have plenty of time to overanalyze and continue to figure out. Um, what is up Disney's sleeve as they uh, continue to, you know, build at their parks around the world. And I mean, their parks like uh, Disneyland Paris didn't get any announcements here. Tokyo, Tokyo. Disney sea, Tokyo, totally. I think yeah. totally was left off the uh, left off the presentation. It's perfect. And they have their, their uh, they're, they're, they're getting they the new space, uh, space mountain, mountain and they didn't up, right? mention anything. Yeah. Which looking at construction pictures about that, looks like it's actually, it. yeah, and it looks like it's actually going to be Intamin. Mm-hmm. Really, like it, it, it's not going to it's there. not going to be yeah, it's not going to be the same layout. It looks like it could have some track switches and stuff. So very uh, intriguing. I got to keep your eyes on that one. Disney Disney appealing to the Disney fans and not the coaster enthusiasts with that one. Never saw it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because right, that well, the Monsters Inc. Uh, concept art that like ninety nine percent that's going to be a Vacoma suspended, right? Yes. It's, oh, gotta it's be. Yeah, gotta be. And the the Spider Man coaster, it's gotta be a Guardians something. Yeah, very close to Guardians. So Shane, we know your answer. You're you're hyped about Spider Man in Shanghai and the coaster. Yes. Um, is that that's your favorite? Like Bar None is your favorite announcement yeah i think so i mean i uh indiana jones definitely because i love the the franchise and it's close to home but just overall i mean guardians is is uh, you know like probably one of the greatest rides ever built so to have that uh in a new new version i'm super excited about yeah it's hard to say that that's not the best what's your favorite um i'll have to say i guess the monsters inc coaster is the most intriguing to me is it also because it's the most accessible to you? Yeah, out of all these, that's probably the one I would most likely be able to get on. Yeah, John, what is uh, what are you most excited for from D twenty three? I am going to say Villains Land because there's so much mystery around it. There's the concept art. You get that little peak of roller coaster track. Like it's just. It, it's like it's flirting with you almost. And so I want to know, I want to know more about it. I'm intrigued. And because I think the others, we got a lot more detail. I mean, we know essentially what ride system with guardians with uh, monsters, Inc. This is the one where I'm kind of like, Oh, what, what is this going to be? Is it just decorative coaster track or is it actual coaster? Like what's I need to know more. And I'm also interested how they make it fit with, within the park with, with, um, within car with cars, how they replace rivers of America. I just, how that all kind of fits in, in the puzzle that is magic kingdom. I think that's what I'm really most excited about, but definitely that area specifically. Okay. Well, it, it should come as a shock to nobody that the things I'm most excited for are the spaceship earth lounge and the nighttime parades coming to magic. Kingdom. <laughs> no, um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm with Nick. I really, as like an OG theme park rumor person in like the early days of theme park internet, like right around the same time coaster one Oh one was founded. This I feel like has been in the theme park rumor zeitgeist for almost 20 years at this point. I'm so ready for it to come to fruition. Um, 
unless it replaces Muppets, then I'm going to be, you know, mad for like five minutes and then move on with my life. <laughs> so I feel but, like I'm going to get canceled from saying this. I guess when I go, I'm planning a trip there in October, I should ride Muppets <laughs> for the first time. I mean, you don't, is really, it a, don't it's really a, ride is it a show. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, so clearly a, I know nothing about it. <laughs> but, it, you know, it's it's Jim Henson's last work. It's 3D slapstick comedy. There's okay. some great one liners. You will enjoy it. I think you should. You should. It's experience funny. I it like re- that show. You should experience it regardless if you if you go or not. Well, that's my goal for this trip is try to this will be my fifth time there. So really try and go in the like the deep cut attractions of Walt Disney world. And that'll definitely be one of them. You, you head from Muppet vision to uh hall of presidents to carousel of progress <laughs> and just get a lovely dose of AC all day. I like the heat. So I'll be in October. Uh, uh, that'll be like the last heat I get. For a while, so you can catch me outside. How about uh, that? Yeah. How about oh, that? Yeah. How hey, about last that? time I went was in 2020 and I was outside the entire time with a face mask, all the lines were outside, so I'm built. I'm I'm ready for it. You're built different. We're here for yep. it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the stuff is uh, again starting 2025. I think with test track, um, there were some other things that were going to happen later this year, but 2024, 2025, 2026, and beyond. Uh, really interesting and fun way or fun time rather to be a Disney Barks fan. So. so what do you guys think? So since all of these are not coming, obviously, f- online for several years, what do you think Disney's going to do next year? Are they going to run some promotions? Like, How do you think, will they have to do anything once Epic Universe opens? I don't think so. And if you if you believe the, the TEA, ACOM, whatever numbers that came out today that are all made up anyway, it's like, whose line is it anyway, theme point? theme park attendance um magic kingdom is going to be fine like they put 17 million people through the gates or whatever it was last year and that was far and away the best the biggest park of anywhere um i saw animal kingdom had a little bit of a fall off but yeah people want to make it this big like competition and i really i mean it's possible that epic universe puts a little bit of a dent there's so much to do in orlando that i think people are going to they're, they're going to find their way to one park or another yeah. i don't think yeah. disney's going to have to go on the offensive too much because magic kingdom epcot and hollywood studios are three of the top four parks and then you have islands of adventure at fifth yeah so it's disney will always be disney I think that's what it comes down down to in Orlando. I think really with Epic Universe, people are not going to be substituting a Disney day to go there. I think it'll just add a day to their vacation. Mm. I think so. John, what do you think? You asked the question. I don't know. That's why I asked the question. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have thoughts, honestly. I just wonder... I. I guess I was, and obviously these things can't be built overnight, but I was just a little surprised how far out they are. Because if you're looking at that and you're a huge Encanto fan, you're a Cars fan, and you see this and you're, you know, are you just, let's just delay our trip or are we going to just go now and go to Epic Universe and not since Disney, you know, there's just, and I, I agree that it won't make a huge dent, obviously, but I do. I'm just curious what a family that has that mix of, you know, you could go to Disney. They're old. The kids are old enough to go to Universal. And I, I believe I don't I won't say this 100 percent certainty, but I think the ticket availability for Epic Universe, you'll have to buy tickets to studios and Alan's Adventure. I just make that up. Yeah, if you purchase like through a third party, I think is what they decided on that okay and we'll find out more about tickets in the coming yeah i mean we've still got 10 months or so before this thing opens if Mm. if can't wait yeah it's gonna be a blast again really good time to be a theme park fan i think we've emerging strongly out of the pandemic and these parks are continuing to invest and um you know in that same vein in a future episode maybe the next one maybe not i don't know because 
I only schedule these things like the day of and then figure it out. But we're going to talk about the new roller coasters in 2025, and there are a lot of them. So, again, great time to be a theme park fan, great time to be a coaster fan, and a great time to be a fan of Coaster 101. So you can go to Coaster101.com to get all of the latest and greatest theme park announcements. You can read the D23 recap. You can read about all of those new coasters. You can read about slow-moving water dark rides and see why Navi River Journey is on par with Rainforest Cafe. Uh, You can also follow Coaster 101 on social at Coaster 101 anywhere you can consume social media. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, slash X, TikTok, you know, Shane, for months, we were trying to make you the face of the TikTok. And now I'm the face of the TikTok. And it's it's awful for awful for everyone involved. My (laughs) My wife's students have found Coaster 101 on TikTok and oh, good, like talk, good. talking to her about it. I'm like, oh, no, I shouldn't do this. <laughs> oh, um, no, you should. You absolutely you should. should. You should All keep right. doing it. The face for a new generation. I'm just like Pepsi or Coke or whatever that soda was. Anyway, if you're like listening to this, make sure you're liking, rating, reviewing, subscribing, leaving us reviews on Apple podcast, uh, rating us five stars on Spotify. There's some other stuff you can do on Spotify, like leave comments, I guess. I downloaded the Spotify for Podcasters app this week, so if you want to interact with the show, social media, or do something on Spotify if you listen there. Um, If you want to wear merch with our logo or Inspired by logo on it, um, c101.co slash tpublic. You can find the latest and greatest Coaster 101 merch there. Um, I know Nick's sister and brother-in-law, they were recently at Busch Gardens Tampa, And uh, they were rocking some Coaster 101 gear. Um, I was particularly proud of the Iron Gwazi inspired (laughs) design um, Mm. that I believe it was your brother-in-law was wearing. So there we go. I I designed that, guys. I was really proud of (laughs) it. And someone wore it. (laughs) I designed it and somebody who's not me wore it. That's the best part. (laughs) It's a good compliment. Yep. And last but not least... A huge thank you, as always, to JMMD Entertainment for our theme music. Uh, They're getting ready to gear up for some shows this holiday season at parks around the country. So JMMD Entertainment, go check them out. But uh, Shane, Nick, John, thank you guys for uh, jumping on. We got a little bit of a longer show this week, but we had a lot to talk about. So come back anytime. John, yes, even you. I'll be back in two years to discuss the next one. (laughs) Oh, boy, can't (laughs) wait. See you guys then. Same place, same time. Yeah, let's... Let's hope so. Um, <laughs> let's 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 find a way to hope so. I think I I don't I don't know how to feel about that sentence. But as I uh, worry about this existential like time crunch, um, you guys have a good week, and we will talk to y'all again soon. See ya.